Next, we have the talk of Professor Danilo Diaz from Universidad Andres Bello, Bio Bio. He will talk about the Casimir Cardi regime for GJMS on the torus, role of the multiplicative anomaly, and uh, a work, a joint work with Jose Guayos and Professor Buccini. So, Professor Diaz, you have now in minutes. I will, I will tell you when you have five and one minutes left. Okay. So, I will press the panic button and then close. Okay. okay, thanks very much uh, to all of you for being there. It's a pleasure. And then, then thanks also, thank the organizer for this nice opportunity. Uh, I just wanted to present uh, his, his work is probably is uh, too, too large work eh, for this. These are just the preliminary results. And then I hope that, uh, ah, they have two excuses. There is a, uh, there is a gravitational counterpart that, that, that I won't be mentioning today, but this is one reason for doing this uh, in, in the gravity, mm -hmm. in the gravity component. And the other one is that the method we will be using are borrowed from, from other uh, part of physics. Mm -hmm. So I would like to talk about Casimir or vacuum energy for GJMS operators, which are uh, higher derivatives operators, and we will put them on the torus. And then uh, we will try to check expected universality and see if a multiplicative anomaly plays a role there. And this is done in collaboration with Rodrigo Aros and Fabricio Buccini. Good. The general aim is to propose a resolution to an apparent uh, discrepancy we will, we will come across for the central charge of this uh, conformal power of, of the Laplacian. And uh, if you compute it in two different ways, one doing the heat kernel, standard heat kernel computation on the sphere, and if you try to, to to probe the central charge by computing vacuum energy in the torus. And then the rest, this is the concrete computation, and the rest is just speculation, no? a possible application of computation of entanglement entropy. But this is just for the future, hopefully. Uh, the plan is very brief. Is we put the GJMS on the two sphere, then we want to put them on the torus, and then we will be computing, trying to compute the multiplicative anomaly and restoration of the expected universality. And then I finish. So let me check my clock. Okay. So what are GJMS operators? These are one of our favorite animals, which uh, <laughs> they have nice properties on their uh, wide rescaling of the metric. And were discovered in 92 by this uh, gentleman. And they discovered that you can have uh, powers of the Laplacian and then you have to complement with lower order terms in derivative and Ricci tensors only. Mm -hmm. And then they were able to prove existence in all dimension, existing in even dimension, but there are obstruction if the dimension is even. However, if it was long known that on the sphere you can have them all, and in more, in more generality, you, if, if the manifold is Einstein, you can also have them. And then they have a nice uh, factorization problem. And if you have factorization property, you can compute by a heat kernel, the accumulate, accumulated uh, heat coefficient. So on the two sphere, you can compute trace anomaly by, by keeping track on the, on the relevant heat coefficient of the uh, shifted Laplacian. And this is easily computed and you get K order of the operator to the third power. This has a nice holographic interpretation, mm -hmm. part of the ADS-CFT dictionary, we can say. And this has also uh, verified by explicit spectral computation by one of the 
to say if there is a law of the zeta function, Docker is one of them uh, by explicit computation. So we are happy, fine. Mm -hmm. But if we go to the torus now, we want to put this higher derivative operators on the two torus. And, and first one can realize that you can put them on the Einstein cylinder and you can compactify the, the time, uh, imaginary time direction, and then you get the, you get two alternative factorizations in, ten, in terms of the uh, conformal Laplacian on the spatial part. And this was known, and here you can compute, for example, vacuum energy using a standard procedure, theta regularization, and this can be done a la Gibbons, Perry, Pope, or Beccaria, Selkin, as you wish. And then you can go to the torus, n equal two. But on the torus, you expect uh, that the Casimir energy to be physical, related to the central charge, C. And uh, York gave a nice introduction this morning, and this is my poor man, <laughs> uh, example of this computation. You get the uh, uh, you have this di formally divergent series, you regularize with the uh, Riemann zeta, and then you get the famous minus one over 12, and this means that the free boson, which is k equal to one, the central charge is, is one, and then we are all fine. But if you try to play the same game for the higher order operators, then you get discrepancy. And then you can ask uh, yourself what uh, went wrong, what was overlooked, or, or do we have to live with this? And then after looking uh, very carefully, you realize that all this computation of, of the vacuum energy for higher derivative operator, they usually miss or don't consider the, the multiplicative anomaly when, when this is computed using theta regularization. So the multiplicative, uh, multiplicative anomaly or defect is it happens for, for any par, pair sorry, of uh, differential operator. It's determinant of the product is not the product of the determinant, this means regularized determinant. This was probably first noticed in a physical context in uh, some PhD thesis by Bruce Allen probably. But the mathematician also got a uh, hand on this, and, uh, and, and this defect can be computed by so called what sits residue, also in a PhD thesis around the same year. Okay, so we should take a look at this multiplicative anomaly to see if it plays any role here. And then we were uh, lucky two times. <laughs> First, because k equal to two, which is so-called Panite's operator, is the first one, which is quartic, has a direct physical counterpart. And you can almost, this is almost the name of the paper, a paper by Elisalde Filippi Banzo Servini. They computed one loop effective potential for a bosonic model, a finite temperature and background charge with its related multiplicative anomaly. So they were able to compute the multiplicative anomaly for this. And they have also two different factorization. And the only robust way to compute and to have uh, agreement doing theta regularization for each of these two alternative factorization was by the inclusion of this extra term. That, by the way, modifies the vacuum energy. Uh, this is uh, Panites, and what about then uh, higher orders? So we were also lucky because for product of three or more commuting elliptic operators, the multiplicative anomaly happens to be pairwise accumulative. That means if you compute the anomaly between any pair of them, this is enough to know uh, to make the, the composition of the higher operator into the uh, pieces of second order derivative. And this was 
uh, incredibly. Mm? This was obtained by, by local mathematicians. Mm? Here, I believe, Eduardo Friedman is sitting in Las Palmeras. And I remember in 2009, we had a chat with him and we learned a lot about uh, Barnes function, multiple gamma, and this was related to the computation we were trying to do on, on question of ADS, or, or Euclidean BTC and stuff like that. But for some reason, I don't understand, they took a look at the product for, of these elliptic operators and computed the multiplicative anomaly in general. So with these two ingredients, you have, uh, they paved the way to a, uh, to the computation we want we want to do it's just uh, i don't i you don't want to see the detail but the, the bottom line is that you compute the correction due to multiplicative anomaly and it's typically a combinatorial number and when you plot this they call elizalde and company they call it naive i don't like <laughs> maybe the word naive but it's just uncorrected or whatever but, but the message is that in the end, you get the, the central charge as computed from you have the heat kernel minutes. coefficient. Sorry, how many? Five. Five, yeah, very good, because this is the happy ending and Cardi, you get, Cardi regime is high, high, high temperature you get by making a modular transformation on the torus. And the rest is the speculation what speculation? If you go to four dimensions, you know that Casimir energy, one knows is scheme dependent. This is long known. But if you put some extra supersymmetry, then there is a natural analog of the Casimir energy that turns out to be intrinsic, meaning it's, it's regularization scheme independent and contains information on the four dimensional central charge. And so whenever you have there also higher derivative operator, you, you may want to pay attention to the multiplicative anomaly. And if you do the same computation, not in the close Einstein universe, but you trade the sphere by the hyperbolic section, then this is relevant for the computation of entanglement entropy as, as shown by Cassini, Wert, and Myers. But uh, there are several discrepancies also there between the expected universality that if you compute on the sphere, you are, you hope that the, or you expect that the log coefficient is uh, the central charge A, A, sorry, A, but there are some discrepancies and this was discovered by, okay, there are many, many subtleties there. And our, our, our hope is that maybe, maybe the non-compact analog of the multiplicative anomaly might play, play any role there. But it's, as I said, it's just uh, speculation. So uh, I finish by thanking usual conversation with Docker, Patrushev, Settling, and trying to move on and, and get rid of this uh, apparently spell put on by Abel on divergence series. So thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Danilo, for your interesting talk. Um, is there any questions? Is there any question for Carlos Reyes? Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would like to know, Danilo, if if you apply dimensional regularization, would you find this anomaly or a defect? Thank you. Uh, we have a problem with dimensional regularization, but not not in this, not by doing the the computation on the torus, but we do this computation on say Euclidean BTC or or, or film thermal ADS, and then there is an ambiguity there. How, how do you define the renormalized volume? If we do it as a, with a cutoff, then we get precisely 
the, the final result. But if we do it via dimensional regularization, we get a mismatch. And it's probably because uh, in dimensional regularization, you, you make contact with theta, regu theta regularization when you inflate by putting more surface on the torus and not inflating with a sphere. This is probably explained by Hawking in his seminal paper. And then, and then if he, uh, yes, to make contact with the, with theta regularization, then, then the extra dimension, there's a subtlety with the extra dimension you put. Thank you. Okay. So, Rodrigo, have a question? Mm -hmm. Danilo. Nice talk, by the way. Um, can, can, can you briefly remind us what is the relation between these panate operators and Q curvature and renormalized volume? Ah. <laughs> uh, it's a panate operator in four dimensions is homogeneous, has only, has only derivatives, there is no constant term. If you go away from, from, let's say, four dimensions, then you get a vanishing term, and this is the Q curvature, right? The Q, the critical, let's say, in, in four dimensions. And when you renormalize uh, volume of, of, of uh, Einstein I, uh, asymptotically ADS, you know, renormalized volume, the, the, the yeah, one we are using is hyperbolic. The, the, uh, in, in, in all dimensions, then you get the, the uh, holographic anomaly or volume anomaly. And this is the integral. Well, okay, it's the Q curvature modulo boundary or total derivatives. Hmm? All right. This, this was more, this is the connection that the renormalized volume that the physicists computed. Uh -huh. was proven to be the in, the anomaly of the renormalized volume is okay. is related to the uh, holographic anomaly and then this this is supposed to be the trace anomaly of the dual field but at, at, at strong coupling right thank you okay. but okay in, in, in three to two is is a stronger is is brown and all it's, it's uh, Yes, it's the coefficient of the logarithmic part of us. Thank you. Um, so, Manuel, do you have a question? Yeah, it was a similar question. So probably the answer was already given, but question was about the generalization to higher dimensions than four, Panay's operator, Q curvature, and so on. So in compact case, not just in... in mm -hmm. So is there a multiplicative anomaly plays a role in that case? This is where we are, look, we are trying to examine. Certainly for the computation of the trace anomalies, this, they, they play no role because the, the charge are really universal. Eh? In, let's say in four dimensional, the A and the C, or in six dimensions are not affected by any multiplicative anomaly. But if one is looking to vacuum, energy then then they they are they are really uh, sensitive to this uh, to the prescription let's say and then of course we, one can say th th there has always been a great debate hmm, whether it's physical or not but at least in two dimensions should be physical and then in four dimension uh, this is the, the the thing i put in the in the perspective in, in, in four dimension, you can look at the twisted version, and this is supposed to be also universal, related to the central charges. So that, that is one line of, of getting hold on something uh, uh, universal, let's say, universal. I, I do have a, uh, another question on the same subject. Is there, a, there is something called a topological anomaly so how this depends on the topology of the, uh, of the manifold you have in the ground, in the compact case? Uh, not sure I can really answer the question because uh, 
uh, the trace anomaly, there is a piece that uh, proportional to the Euler density, but probably it's not the same. It's, it's not the, what you mean by topological anomaly. No, but it's not the, the same. The no. It's the final part of that. But, but the thing we can uh, really compute and, and holographically also compute is, is, is the, the one that enter in the, in the, in the trace anomaly, in the trace anomaly. Thank you very much. Nice talk. Thank you.